what's growing on I'm Brian Taylor and today I'm going to be making a video on kutsu which is also known as the vine that ate the south and give you a little bit of history about it I've wanted to make this video for a long time and this has been a very this is a very good looking patch we're on the side of a highway so there's going to be cars coming by like that one so I'll try not to let the cars interrupt the video uh, so a little history on kutsu. Kutsu was brought to the United States in 1970 or 1876 to the World's Fair as a option for ornamental gardening vines in the south. It's pretty pretty cool. A lot of other things were introduced at that time like the telephone and ketchup. So several cool things were, were, were brought to the World Fair at that time. Um, in 1930 we had the Dust Bowl which was the worst man-made disaster in US history and one of the worst ever on earth. This was caused by for poor farming practices like tilling the soil and removing organic matter. The US government decided that Kutsu would be a way to combat the erosion created by the Dust Bowl and were even willing to pay up to $7 an acre to plant these in, in areas that had serious erosion issues. This was something that was practiced in the South and through Central United States. Um, it was also brought in as a, a cattle feed crop. Um, a, lot of, a lot of possible solutions to our problems uh, were, were supposedly going to be solved with kutsu. Um, unfortunately, kutsu did a little bit more than what it was supposed to do. It was a extremely fast growing vine. There are some reports of it growing up to a foot a day, which is incredible. Um, and it then became the, the vine that was known as the vine that ate the south. Um, if you guys look around, you can see the kutsu vines have totally taken over this area of highway. On both sides of the highway, it's just completely taking it over, climbing up anything that it can. And what it does is, is it comes up and it covers the canopy of some of these larger trees and chokes them out so that they don't get light and kills them. And so that's why it's such a, a bad vine to be growing kind of out of control in the south. So in the 1970s, it was moved off of the recommended species list for planting in the south. And then about 1990, it was put on the invasive weed, obnoxious weed list. And uh, they're spending about $7 million a year trying to fight it. Now in, the, in about 2009, I haven't seen any of these yet here, but I saw some when I was over in Georgia. Actually, come over right here. This is perfect. So in about 2009, they believe the kutsu bug made it to Atlanta, possibly a single female. And those bugs then were able to reproduce and spread rapidly throughout the, the south. The kutsu bugs definitely feed on kutsu vines, that's why they're calling them the kutsu bug. But they also feed on other legumes um, and are becoming kind of a difficult pest to control for some of the soybean agriculture crops that are found throughout the, the southern states. These bugs are not really harmful to humans, they do not bite. Um, they're actually a relative of the common stink bug that they find in the south on a regular basis. They're just a lot smaller. So if you squish them, they're going to smell and they're going to irritate the skin a little bit. What they do like to feed on is the new growth on the kutsu, so you'll commonly see them gathered around the, the tips of the kutsu vines. While the, the vines are fresh and new, they're softer, they can get there and eat them. So they are doing a good job helping control the spread of kutsu throughout the, the southern states, but probably not enough to completely eradicate the kutsu vine. So one of the, one of the other problems with, uh, with kutsu is that it was, it was meant to fight erosion, but because it takes down these large trees, it's actually contributing to a lot of the problems that we're seeing. Now how kutsu spreads is pretty incredible. So these, these vines will fall, and as they make contact with the ground, new roots will shoot out causing it to have another point of contact and then even if it gets severed from the other plant it's going to survive and continue to spread. Um, the other way that they produce and we're actually re I'm really happy that we're in this spot because I haven't seen them yet is through flowers so we'll come over here and we'll zoom in on those flowers. 
so they will flower and those flowers will go to seed like most plants and then spread in the wind but the flowers actually are really pretty and I think that uh it's one of the first time I've actually seen the flowers but they're, they're very pretty and uh, the flowers go eventually break off and these will turn into seeds and then they will spread uh, throughout the south. All right, now I'm gonna go in a little different direction. So I wanna actually name some of the good things about kutsu and why I think this plant is kind of overrated as a, as a bad plant for us. So one of the main things that I like about kutsu is that it is a nitrogen fixing plant. Like other beans and legumes, Nitrogen is a, a resource that most of our plants need to grow and it provides its own nitrogen. It absorbs it from the atmosphere, pulls it into the root system, it uses it for itself, and it gives it to other plants nearby. It also makes an excellent ground crop. This could be used to keep our ground temperatures cooler and help just retain life in our soil. Uh, the next big thing that you can use it for is a biofuel. So there's a lot of people processing it right now, using it to create energy which is another just awesome fact. Then one of the coolest ones that I've recently learned about is it's being used to manage alcoholism. So unlike some prescription drugs that like make you vomit when you, when you drink alcohol, this doesn't manage it like that. What it's doing is it's actually curbing your desire for alcohol, which is what you really want. You don't want to have that desire and then it make you sick. You want to eliminate that desire. Plus, it's one of the most beautiful vines I've ever seen. I mean, as much as it looks devastating when you see it take over a patch, it is one of the most beautiful things you see in the South and it's become part of their landscape. That's why I really like it. So I don't want to create any kind of controversy. Anytime I bring up Kutsu in Arizona, everybody freaks out. But when you consider that 40% of our rainfall comes from green vegetation and Arizona has no green vegetation, instead of adding rocks and concrete, we might want to add something like this. I'm not saying this is the, the answer, but we should think like that so that we can help conserve water in a way that isn't just adding to the heat. This is Arizona is getting hotter and hotter and hotter every year. We're getting tired of living there, and I think the native plants are getting tired of living there because they're, they're doing things that they've never done before and dying in numbers we haven't seen. So we might need to start thinking out of the box to come up with ways to get our soil alive and, and help help the uh, natural flow of evaporation work in our area. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I've really wanted to make it. So please subscribe and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.